Hi, I'm Lindsay Nataki, pediatric speech language pathologist, and I'm here today to help you work on speech and language at home. Welcome to part two of my three-part series where I teamed up with Fluent AAC to teach you everything you need to know about AAC. Today, I'm gonna to talk about benefits and myths of AAC. Before we get started, go ahead and head down to fluentaac.com to learn more about AAC. Their app is also available on the App Store now. What I love about this company is that they are innovative, they're inclusive, they advocate for diversity, and they really make it a priority to allow these AAC devices and communication boards that they offer to be individualized to that specific user. They just came out with new backgrounds that users can select based on their personal interests. Things like the ocean or dinosaurs, and this just makes it that much more fun for AAC users to use. Let's go over benefits. The benefits of AAC is that the user is able to connect and feel a sense of belonging to their community. They can conversate, they can ask questions, answer questions, tell jokes, and really feel comfortable in their own skin. AAC gives the users confidence to advocate for themselves because now they have a voice and their voice is powerful and it matters. Using this voice allows them to be more independent and it allows them to partake in conversations that matter to them. If the user is verbal, then AAC gives that user another method of communication. If that user ever finds themselves in a situation where they are maybe too frantic, they have too many, too many emotions going on, they can't find the words that they need to communicate, then they always have their AAC to fall back on to, to support them through those moments. AAC allows that user to reach their full potential. You never know what a person is capable of until they try, and they won't try until they feel confident. I have had so many children who were nonverbal and, and was having a really difficult time connecting and communicating, and when I introduced AAC to them, it was like something clicked, and they were able to tell me when they were hungry. They were able to tell me to stop. They started to smile. They were able to take control of their surroundings, and their language grew from there. AAC supports receptive language and cognition development. A lot of times we think that when our children or when an, an individual is not able to communicate, we struggle with, with understanding what they know. But what AAC does is it allows us to work on the receptive language and to work on cognition, even if the express, their expressive language is not at the same level. Without AAC, if a person is nonverbal or has a difficult time expressing their needs, they could feel isolated and disconnected and they might always believe that they will be dependent on someone else for their, the rest of their lives, when well, that's just not true. Let's take Stephen Hawking for an example. He is the most famous AAC user. If he didn't speak with his AAC device, we would not have been able to know what he was capable of. Let's talk about myths. Myth number one, there is a prerequisite for AAC. There are some people that, that believe before a child or a person is able to use a high-tech speaking device, they first have to be able to select a certain number of nouns. This is not true. We know that children who are nonverbal and lower functioning will be motivated to select core words like I want and more for a highly motivating item like a favorite snack or a favorite toy. Myth number two, AAC is only used for people who are nonverbal. Again, this is not true. There are so many people who, are, who struggle to express themselves. If anyone is having a hard time expressing themselves, then they can use AAC to support themselves. I know so many children who learned baby sign when they were little, and as they were growing, as they grew, uh, their, their verbal language began to take off. But in those moments of frustration, when they aren't being understood, they actually clarify. So for example, there's a little girl that I know and she says, and she would say, mom, I want the, I want water. And when her mom didn't understand her, mom was like, what do you, I, what are you saying? I can't understand you. She said, water, water. So she's clarifying, going back to her AAC, unaided gesture, sign language AAC to communicate to her mom that she wants water because her verbal language wasn't cutting it. AAC is the last resort for speech and language development. This is not true. Many times, I will bring out AAC as one of the first things that I do to support language development. AAC is a great tool right from early on in, in the infant stage when infants are learning cause and effect 
AAC switches and buttons are great at teaching this. And once cause and effect is mastered, the speech and language and cognition development grows from there. Children will prefer to use AAC over verbal language. Again, this is not true. If children are able to effectively communicate using verbal language, then they will do so. AAC is always used as a way to support their communication. Think of it this way. If the child didn't have AAC to fall back on and was struggling to, to communicate with their verbal language, what would happen is they would become frustrated, they might tantrum, they might have a meltdown, they might be discouraged to communicate because it's too hard. AAC is not the preferred method of children who are verbal, but it is a very important support and a backup, if you will, just in case they need it. For some children, AAC is their primary mode of communication. And again, I already went over all the benefits of that. Overall, AAC only helps, it never hurts. It increases confidence, boosts self-esteem, and allows families to come together and connect. I've had so many moments where, where families get to celebrate these monumental moments where their child who is nonverbal is able to participate in a school activity or is able to do a presentation using their AAC device. So that's all I have for you today. I hope this video was helpful. Again, don't forget to check out fluentaac.com and their app in the app store. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye.